Right, um, let's get started and uh, note to self, do not mention anything to do with tax or tax reduction. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that was, uh, some of those comments were tough, man. I know, they got like, uh, and it got over, it got almost a million views on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. I think last time I checked that, like 770,000. I haven't checked, I haven't read any of the comments. I unfortunately did. Yeah, yeah um, I know you told I, me. I, I had to like drop it in. I'm, yeah, I'm glad I didn't read really yeah. by the sounds of it. Uh, how's things, bro? How are you? Alhamdulillah, man. All good. How are you? Yeah, all good. All good. Uh, just uh, same old really. Um, I was thinking about, uh, yeah, so actually we were having this discussion off air, so let's continue it. So I said, I said we'll have it on air. So what you asked me was, no, we were talking about, where should I start? First of all, I was thinking about doing, uh, I'm thinking about doing this course online. Cool. Well, uh, it, 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 it was about digital, um, Digital uh, personal branding. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I just had a decaf. Okay, wow, yeah. you must be bouncing off the yeah. walls. <laughs> no, so I'm the opposite. <laughs> oh yeah, no, sorry, yeah. I'm not bouncing yeah. My brain is not working. Uh, I had my last coffee at uh, like straight after Jumma, so two o'clock. So I'm really, I'm. So you, this you, is my non-caffeine. You brain. just crashed basically. You just crashed now. Yeah, I crashed as we rehearsed <laughs> before. Um, I've been thinking about launching a course that is about personal branding. Right. Okay. So obviously, uh, I'm in marketing and have the marketing consultancy out here and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I've helped individuals uh, with also with personal branding, uh, but not necessarily as a professional offering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking maybe I can actually because I I get asked a lot for advice often and in a non uh, flashy way, like friends are normally uh, friends and stuff. And when I do ask them, like. Uh, they're like, oh, like I never thought about that. And so I was thinking, well, I've had enough of those comments to go, maybe I should put a course together and hopefully, maybe what I'm saying, that like maybe the marketing world and branding uh, actually connects to personal branding. Uh, obviously it does. And so I was thinking, okay, so then I wrote down uh, uh, what this course itinerary would look like and I actually even started scripting the course. And then I got what most people get all the time with any project, which is like halfway through scripting, I was like, oh, do I really want to do it? And then you just, un you deconvince yourself. Uh, so, th and then I was thinking maybe I should do it in person. Maybe I should fly to London because obviously I did that one at, uh, in London a few years ago about podcasting. And then it's all kind of fallen flat in the last 24 hours. I'm like, hmm, do you think I should do it? PB, personal branding? Yeah, two, two things here. One, we forget, because it happens to me as well. Like um, I put out a few like Instagram stories where I was talking about like copywriting and stuff like that, right? And I was getting questions from people and I'm asking things that I'd, I'd never even thought that people need help with, yeah. right? And it was like, you have to remind yourself that, okay, you've been doing something for five years, you know like the basics and you just think everyone does. But there's a lot of stuff that people just don't know and there's a lot of value in, I don't know. It's probably just the firm. Yeah, there's a lot of value in just like teaching those what you would consider basics, but other people is like, oh wow, that's a huge like stepping stone towards su success for me. So I think like, yeah, it's what you're mentioning basically is like, you know, people offer, asking you personal branding stuff that you could very, very easily answer. Secondly, you going to London, I'm not a fan of because it's not scalable. Like you're gonna go there, you'll do like one thing, and that's fine. I just love in-person things. May maybe do it as well, but yeah. I wouldn't say make that the main thing. I would say record it online and sell it online. And yeah, but there's not really money in the in-person thing. I, I, just, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, that, I mean, sell it for 250 quid, you get 20 people turn up. But I can't pay for a flight. Yeah, you made five grand gross. Business Ill. class. <laughs> 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 oh, you, uh, By the way, I should say that we're not saying ill to five grand. That makes us sound so obnoxious. Oh, yeah. oh, we have like this running joke privately where like, I said gross a few times to uh, Kyle when we talk about income and stuff. Obviously, gross income is your income pre-tax and pre don't, don't go there. Don't yeah, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> do not mention tax. Yeah. Uh, and every time I say the word gross, I feel like saying like, ew, gross. Yeah, I feel like that's what yeah. I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. We, weren't, we weren't sniffing our noses off. Yeah, we weren't like, oh, five. But anyway, yeah, you make five grand gross yeah. and then you pay for your flights and uh, your venue yeah. and course materials. Yeah. And then you want to maybe like offer some kind of <coughs> goodie bag or like refreshments. You've basically spent the whole, all the five grand. You have, but let's, let's even say, for example, you make five grand, right, from that thing. Let's yeah, say, profit, let's say, let's fine, say, yeah, net. net. Yeah, <laughs> not great. <not>, not, <laughs> <laughs> let's say you do that, even then, it's still not, it's the, not worth it, the yeah. best idea because it's not scalable. You gotta go back and forth every time to do that. Whereas yeah. if you record it online, the only thing stopping its growth is just like the ads you put behind it or the content you put behind it, right? So here's what, yeah. So, and you, and you, can, you can sell that 
a hundred times, a thousand times, a million times, whereas the course is like limited to how often you can go back and how big of a room you can, it's like a lot more limitation. Yeah. The third thing is this whole concept of like, you had the idea, you had that sort of burning, you know, energy to do it. And then after 24 hours, you sort of stopped. Yeah. This is something that I suffer with as well, for sure. Um, we just need to ex execute faster, man. We should say, you know what? Okay, this idea is, 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 is good enough. It's not gonna like, you know, set the world alight, but it's good enough. I can execute, I could probably do this course in like three days. Script it and record it and like publish it. And realistically, you probably could. Just do it. Well, I was um, uh, saying and, and, and that- And the thing is, I say that, sorry, to interrupt you. No, no. Even if it doesn't work, like, bro, it's just three days of like, you, you're, you're, you're experimenting, you're testing the yeah. thing. It's like, okay, three days of work. Um, it's not three work. days of work though, because the filming will take time. How long, but how, how, how long is the course though? I think it'd be like 50 uh, um, like classes. Okay, that is a lot. Uh, that is a lot. I was thinking a much smaller course. But they might be like 10 minutes long, but yeah. You could, again, you could also launch like, if you make it a proper series. But I've got value to give. Yeah, I'm joking. But you could, you, could look, you could launch with just 10 and just say, look, this is the introductory course. The sec you, know, you sign up, you're going to get access to all of it, but it's just like, that's, that's coming out in January or March or whatever. Okay, so this is where I, this is where I, oh, I was leading. So I believe now, we live in a different world now than we did a few years ago. I think a few years ago, a course or, or, or value is given, one can give value, regardless of whether it's a course or it's free, the, the money's not the, the point here, the point is the value. One cat could give value a few years ago by simply explaining something. Right. Here's five ways you do this, or here's how to do your personal brand. I think now things have changed, I'm just talking about how I consume content. I no longer consume any content, bro, that's just someone giving me facts on a screen. The only content I consume, if it's, on, if it's in the category of uh, self-education, is actually someone showing me. So someone recording the screen and showing me technical, technically how they're doing something. Yeah. And, um, and so I think the world's changed now, and so that's part one. So, so the part one is, I wanna make sure I'm giving maximum value. So rather than showing them just how to, uh, giving them some facts about personal branding, actually going into detail of showing how I actually uh, execute something or action something. That's, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is now if you, see if you see courses online now, bro, I might be wrong, it might just be the course that I'm seeing. But, I, but, but these are the courses that I actually have seen value in and have either like uh, purchased or thought about purchasing. The courses that are, bro, fat, they're not 10 episodes, uh, uh, 10 classes, they're like 50 classes, 60 classes, um, or, or like uh, I, bought, uh, I bought a ebook recently and it was, bro, you're talking, I don't wanna say hundreds of pages, but it felt like it, it was a very, very large PDF and um, you get so much value out of it. And so I just don't want to do anything where I'm like, not providing maximum value. I think you can't pull wool over people's eyes like that. I'm not saying you're suggesting that. I think you that. can. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm not, I don't think you're suggesting that. No. But I, all I'm saying is that I think a few years ago, you could have a meek, is meek a word? Like yeah, weak? It is. But I think you could have a meek course where you're s providing a bit of value and then, and that's it. The second thing is this year. This is a big thought that I've been thinking about. Well, the third thing. This is a big thought that I've been thinking about. I don't know how to arc articulate it. So I'm just going to try and just see if my words make sense. I think that the people who are the most successful in, in content, in courses, podcasting, anything, are people who respect the intelligence of their audience. And I think that when you have a microphone in front of you or a camera in front of you, that the immediate and initial gut reaction in your mind is, I'm the one with the mic in front of me, I'm the one on camera, I have something to teach people that they don't know about and therefore I'm gonna to speak to them in a patronizing manner. And I think I've fallen into this for the last six years. And however, when I the content I consume, I actually, the content I consume is a content when I'm not actually, I don't feel like I'm being taught. I feel like someone on my, uh, on my level is having conversations that I would like to have with them, but I just don't know them. So I'm more of a fly in the wall. And, um, and if I have felt like I am consuming content where I'm being taught, because I have been through those types of content, like the Dave Ramsey stuff that I was talking about. Dave Ramsey, at the time I was consuming his content, I knew nothing about finances. And, I was definitely consuming his content to learn. But when I was learning, I wasn't learning directly. He wasn't speaking to me like, 
you loser who doesn't know anything about finance. He was speaking to me like, um, he's having conversations with someone and assuming that I'm gonna pick up along the way and I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna figure it out. All of it can be categorized as, respecting the intelligence of your audience. I think what we do at Freshly Grounded and the reason Freshly Grounded has been successful is because we respect the intelligence of our audience because we're not going, on the podcast, we're having a conversation and we're assuming that everybody who is listening is with us in that conversation. They just can't talk. Whereas I think where we would go wrong is if we were going, and there's been a few times in the podcast over the past few years when I've broken the fourth wall, I guess, and gone, oh, those for those of you listening, you know, X, Y, Z. I think those moments don't work because you're reminding the audience that they're not in the room. Yeah. And I think the point of podcasts is that, look, we're all just in one big room. We just happen to have the mic in front of us and have the platform. It's something that's come from Allah. Uh, but yeah, respecting the intelligence of your audience. Where that relates back to the courses then is, is how can I create a course where I actually feel like I've respected the intelligence of the audience? And I think the way I can do that is by not going, oh, like bro, the clip, the clip I made yesterday on my Instagram, and yeah. Freshly Grounded Instagram. It was like two tips that I tell people yes. when uh, in person branding. Those two tips are genuine tips where I thought these are valuable tips when I'm providing value. Whereas I, whereas if I thought, if I thought I was just like reading from a script, like Googling what ways can someone improve their personal brand and then I read it out, I wouldn't feel like I'm giving people that value. I hear what you're saying. On one hand, my initial reaction to that was like, <clears throat> you were saying like the kind of course you're coming across, they're not just like, okay, someone sitting in front of the camera telling you facts, right? They need to, need to show you something. That is true, but one thing to keep in mind is that you you are on your on a different place in your journey on like when it comes to marketing, when it comes to podcasting, when it comes to tech, right? There's a lot of people out there who still don't know the basics of stuff. They do. They still need someone to like but just talk to them. they can Google it and then get for free. But what I'm, saying, I'm, not saying to them, I'm not saying to you just do a course, it's just like, oh, it's three episodes of you just talking to the camera and that's it. I'm saying that should be part of the course. It's like the beginning sec the beginner section, right? Yeah. It's like maybe the, these 50 courses could be chopped up where it's like, there's a beginner, um, you know, the first 10, then it's like um, intermediate. And then the last 10 is like, um, okay, here's now, okay, you've got your podcast is a certain size. Now we're gonna like, you know, here's lighting effects I'm experimenting with, here's, you know, different, uh, you know, um, whatever, you know, I don't know what you do. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that way you're sort of, you're and I think like what you're talking about with like, you know, the the way you say it and stuff, or like, you know, not um, respecting the intelligence of the audience. I think that's more about tone rather than content. I think it's more about like, cause, cause you, if someone walks in now and say, look, how, how, do, how does a microphone work? And I don't know. And I was like, oh, well, you just, you're talking to this bit and it goes, it sounds like I'm practicing, but it's, it's, he's genuinely the, the, the info he needs to know. And that's the kind of content I've always delivered. But I, I, I think that if... I could say, look, dummy, obviously you're talking to him, so that's just tone. You could say, oh, right, that's a great question. Actually, it's really interesting. But it's, do you want to attract the... Uh, uh, do you want to attract I, that? What I'm saying is there's people who want to start a podcast or, or sorry, want to have a personal branding um, presence, but they don't know the first thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Maybe you, that's not who... Maybe I feel like... Uh, now, uh, now, maybe I've taken a level. Uh, a, a, I've taken. Uh, I've grown, grown in my grown journey. Up. I've grown <laughs> in my journey to a point where I feel That's like true. perhaps I can now maybe deliver a more advanced. I agree. Class. I, you hundred percent can. I don't know if teaching people how to connect a microphone excites me anymore. I feel like I can give value, bro. I would love to give a course to you. Mm. I see you as my in some ways my, my equal and in other ways my superior in many ways. And so no. how I wouldn't want to give you a course, be, I wouldn't want to give you a course about how to connect a microphone to a sound interface. You probably don't know how to connect a microphone to a sound don't. interface, but I respect your intelligence to know, know, he'll figure that bit out. Let me tell Kaya mm. how powerful it can be to grow a personal brand. You can, you can build networks like, like these people come to you, your, 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 you know, your, your leads increase. I want to have those conversations with you. Fine. You'll figure the mic bit out because I respect your intelligence. Yeah, I'm like, that. I'd love, bro, I'd love to teach a class of people like you. That's a challenge for me mm. because how do I give Kaya value? It's quite tough. So fine. Yeah, in that case, yeah, yeah, and now I'm seeing what your, your project in a whole different light. Before I was thinking like, okay, you know, um, what's it like the total addressable market type of thing. You want to get as many people who's interested in maybe starting podcasts as possible. But now what you're saying is, you want people really who've maybe already got a podcast at 10 episodes, 20 episodes, 50 episodes in and looking for like to get really good at it, right? They, yeah. you, they're not like a total beginner. They know how to use a phone and you're gonna, it's basically like a masterclass. It's like, you're not a total beginner. You're just looking to like make that step into like 10,000 subscribers, 50,000 subscribers type of thing. In that case, yeah, I agree. You shouldn't do the whole beginner part, yeah. 
But bro, creating a course is long, man. Because I started scripting it and I was well, like... Know I also don't think it has to be 50 thing. I just don't think... I, I think you can launch with 10 and say, look, these are the... These are the like the you can be tra- transparent. Do you want to hear the episodes, that, uh, the classes that I had planned? Yeah, go on. How to set up your microphone. <laughs> yeah, number <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. But yeah, I don't, I don't... I don't know if I'm going to do the course thing. I had another I, idea I, that I want to buy you. Fine. I don't know if I want to want to okay. buy you on the podcast or in private. What do you suggest? Should I do it on the podcast? Pod band. Building public in it. Yeah, yeah, bonnet. I mean, it kind of goes against. Anyway, um, I'm probably not going to do it. So. I, I personally, really, I've really wanted to record a course for like years. Like just, but you should. Bro. Uh, yeah, I just, I feel like it. I feel like it's just like, um, I feel like it's relatively easy. I just need a bit of time to do it, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I but think courses are fun as well. I feel, I feel like they would be fun. To do. And then, and then there's there's like the dopamine factor of like people actually taking a course and benefiting from it. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's, uh, then uh, my solu- and then I thought, wait, wait, uh, do you know when you wait, do you know where you can do a ten episode course that's like five minutes per episode and mm. it, it will literally take you two days to record it, maybe one day. Skillshare. Yeah. Absolutely. Problem with Skillshare is you're not going to make big money <coughs> until like. It takes, you have to have 90,000 students. Now, it does have the capacity to give you, oh, like 10,000, whatever. I have like, I think, maybe 300 students or something on my Spotify course, like, oh my, sorry, Shopify course, what is it called? Skillshare. Skillshare course. And um, let me tell you how many students I have on Skillshare and how much money I've been making on Skillshare. Fine. Are you ready to hear how much I'm about to invest? Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, go on. All right, so I have... Um, on my main course, the first course that I put out, which is called How to Get Sponsorships and Brand Deals for Your Podcast, I've got 294 students. On my other one, I've got 82 students. And I'm making, I haven't made any, in total, I've made $1,373.76 on Skillshare. In the last, uh, see, I haven't been paid by Skillshare since June 2022. In the last six months, I've not been paid because the money's been too little. Right. And half of that <coughs> money that's come in has come in through referrals. Six hundred ninety-four, eight seven hundred dollars come in because somebody has uh, found out about my course through Freshly Grounded's YouTube channel, clicked on it in our description, and then um, clicked on our description and then signed up to Skillshare. And Skillshare have given me ten dollars for that person signing okay. up. So the half of the money has come from that. The other half has come from people watching the course. Interesting. Now, most people don't have 100,000 <coughs> subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. So if that's me, who I pushed it a bit on YouTube and stuff, and I haven't even made one month's salary in you know the years, you know we launched it in June 2020. In that time, I've made $1,300. I'm a bit put off that now. Mm. Now, the advantage is, is that Skillshare is like a library where they, you don't have to do any marketing. They push your course. So if you pause, like the 290 people they, who, are, who, who are my students, I've got 375 total students. Most of them probably don't know me or, or because the, that's the good thing about Skillshare. It's a, what's, what do you call it? Uh, there's a word for it. Marketplace. Marketplace. Mm-hmm. There's a marketplace for it. It can go, like if you, in some ways, if you don't have an audience, Skillshare is the best place. You can grow an audience yeah. in there. I know like Ali Abdal mentioned in his video, like he was making, I think like, tens or hundreds of thousands but you know he's probably got like I said like 90 000. let's see how many students he has on one course he's got like 4 million subscribers on YouTube something like that yeah but he was making money on Skillshare even when he had 1 million subscribers yeah. or even less so he's got on one course alone let's see his highest course his highest class on Skillshare his most popular he's got 95,000 students so yeah he's making bank but yeah, how easy is it to get 95,000 students I don't know mm. This, this was my course. So then the other courses I've done, I have have either been physical where I've made good money quickly or they've been digital but using Teachable, which is great okay. because you basically keep all the money. Like you, you pay your taxes and you pay their fees, but you're not doing, it's not like Skillshare. Like, What's the tax bracket you've run doing that? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. But like you can make so, like... So, we're te- so why... What's the difference with Teachable? They just don't take a big cut. A big cut. What's the difference? Teachable's not marketplace. Teachable, you just sell your own course and you Fine. get. Oh, okay, it's a platform. You just the, the, the only Fine. money they take is like I don't know what anyone will take, like Stripe or PayPal. Right, like right. they take their zero point perc- mm. whatever percent cut or two percent cut, whatever. So if you're selling a course for two hundred and fifty quid, you might keep I don't know two hundred and twenty quid. So right. 
after all fees and taxes and stuff. Mm. So in that case, bro, you sell 10 people, your course for 200 pounds, you're making two grand, you sell 20 people, you're making yeah. four grand. You know what, I, could, I think it could, could be good, yeah. Rather than be like, um, rather than it being like um, how to get sponsorships, I mean, I suppose that this was this, that is what it is, what I'm saying, but like, you should you do a course where it's like how I built my podcast for 100,000 subscribers. That wouldn't work on Skillshare. Right. Because yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. let you, yeah. Okay, why not? Uh, they, <laughs> they don't let you because um, they're very, there's a very specific rule book. So stuff like clickbait, stuff like that doesn't, doesn't work. You're also not allowed to have any branding in your courses. You're also not allowed to pr promote like other uh, tools Fair and stuff. Enough. So one time when my wife, I think was on maternity leave, I was like, it's, um, why don't you do a maths course? She's got a maths degree. Mm. And um, I'll just put on, this is the time I had my videos on Skillshare. I was like, why don't you just create a maths course? I'll put it on Skillshare. Yeah. You don't have to like um, do anything. Like obviously it's maths, so you shouldn't have to show, show anything. It's all on screen digital. So I helped her create this maths course from a, from a digital perspective. I edited it, I, I, I made all the graphics and stuff. And she just put the course together, like, cause obviously I don't know maths. And we did the whole course. Uploaded it Skillshare and they rejected it. No. Yeah, because they're like, you're not allowed to teach. One of the rules which I didn't read was you're not allowed to teach, like, I suppose, yeah, like secular stuff. Like, Skillshare is very niche. Like, it's oh, for, I, see, I, I suppose, see. like creatives or something. All so right. there, was, there was some rule that it was breaking, like, you can't teach maths, basically. Right. So, um, do you want to hear my course? Yeah. All right. right. So there was introduction. Uh, what? <laughs> which I've scripted. It's a whole page, A4 page All right. about building a person brand. Then is, there's like, there's different. Um, there's categories and then there's subcategories, isn't there? So right. in the category of introduction, there's introduction and then there's why create content, who is your audience, which is big, like uh, you have to understand who your audience is if you're creating a personal brand. Uh, creating value, which is the idea that one must create value if they're gonna grow a brand. Yeah. Uh, what is the value they're providing? Uh, then there was um, Repurposing content, which is like a whole arm, which is like mm. you, you have to talk about long form content is a, is is a is a episode, a, a class, short form, um, creating uh, short form content is a class, and then should you repurpose your content from long form content or should you create content for short form? Yes. Um, then there's all the different ways and platforms you can create uh, build a personal brand, so podcast and YouTubing. Then I've got things about hardware, software, um, low fi content versus high fi content. Um, <coughs> agent, uh, using agency or editors, um, you, my software stack, newsletters, what are newsletters, types of newsletters, newsletter stack, distribution of newsletters, um, building in public, creating a community, automation and building a team. Um, and then some subcategories under there like contractors, in-house team. Uh, how to build a personal brand without showing your face on camera, Instagram carousels, uh, so that's Instagram stuff, but not feeds and not, not reels. Uh, voice only content. So if you don't want to show your face or yourself at all, uh, growing growth, organic growth uh, via viral content, organic growth via collaborations, paid growth, scripting versus non-scripting, scripting, scripting a, uh, a workshop on scripting uh, and my t using my teleprompter, uh, <laughs> just anything to give my teleprompter <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, strategy. And then I've got some categories where I advise the typical types of personal brands. So mm -hmm. the entrepreneur, the barber, the podcaster slash YouTuber, the freelancer, and then I've got bonus content, which is the physical tools I use, like teleprompter, or <laughs> the software tools I use. Um, and then the last episode is, class is, uh, getting your brain right, don't think too much, just execute, which is kind of what we're talking about now. Mm. That's 55 <coughs> lessons. I, li I like it. I would, I would say, and, and probably the, the content would be actionable, but I think the title is going to be far more actionable. Where it's like, um, so I think that one of the first ones is like, um, why, why, why create content? It should be like, you know, the twenty four, the twenty seven ways to create content. Yeah, that's a, good, right. that's a good point. But that's I do agree with it. But that's also post them being sold, I guess. Well, I, I guess I, if I they mean, see well, the, when people yeah. when people, when people um, are looking at a course, they go look at the chapters, don't they? Yeah, that's I true. You're I right. go look at that, and I say, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, and usually, sometimes it's like one chapter that sells me on that course. Do you know yeah, I mean? you're right. Ways to download it. So I'll you're make right. it all very actionable. Or like, okay, personal brand should be like more like, you know, how to how to how to figure out what a personal brand is. So it's like, oh, you watch this, and by the end of it, you know, I oh, I know I'm the entrepreneur type. I'm actually the the intellectual type. I'm the whatever type. And Short so, form content was something like I don't have time to create a podcast. Yeah, something like that. So it's like, what can I do? Yeah, time. You know, time sensitive. Is there content. anything for me? Yeah, time sensitive content yeah. ideas. All time sensitive content. Yeah. There you go. 
I should write titles. Yeah, um, well, you do write titles. Yeah, I do it like, sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, that, other than that, yeah, it sounds good. It sounds. It sounds. Um, I don't know if I'm going to create it though, bro. That sounds very for me. If I was going to create a course, how I'll, much? Did you, I, I was thinking I should create it, but then I'm like, I, I, I tried and I was like, I have to script it. I want to script it. I've never scripted a course before. Mm. My courses before were bullet pointed but not scripted. I, I want to script yeah, this word for word. I would say no. I would say no. if that was me, I would not script it. I've never scripted something, but guess what? My best work has been when I've scripted it. I've got the teleprompter now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you got scripted now. Yeah. Bro, it makes sense to script it because you, you can think about where's the value that I'm going to give to the people and then you're not trying to think about... There's something about doing off the cuff which is like... I feel like bullet pointing is good. Like, yeah, I maybe. wouldn't script it down to the word. For me personally, I wouldn't script it down to the word. Because yeah. also, I, don't, I wouldn't want it to come across too robotic either. At this point, I don't think I'm actually going to do the course just because time and stuff like that. I think you should do it like te like 10, just cut it down to 10. And then if it does well, then you just like expand it. Oh, but I don't know if like, I just, I just want to like, I want to be content that like I'm definitely <laughs> giving value. And then you want to give it, bro, if you put out one video about something, you give it value. You're not, you're not one of those guys. But like, then I might as well just do it for free on YouTube. I was thinking about even launch, relaunching my YouTube channel. I don't know, Kaya. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's do it something else. It's too stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just switch it up. Enough, enough work for one day. Yeah, this is stressing me out. All right, uh, so <laughs> oh, you got, got a new project for you, Dante. Uh, <laughs> so basically, yeah, I've been getting into. Um, there's a few things I've been getting into recently. I think. Oh, I didn't tell you about the other idea. I'll tell you about it later. Though. Fine, yeah, I'll look forward to that. All right, so I've, I don't know who said it. Yeah, I follow I follow a few of these guys on Twitter, or Instagram, who are like they give these interesting, not philosophical, but like little life hacks. Yeah, Twitter bros. Twitter bros. That's it. Yeah. Um, one of them mentioned the last time principle. Right? Okay. If you're dealing with something tough, a good way to deal with it is to tell yourself, this is the last time I'm doing this, right? And there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is like, oh, this is the last time as in like, I may genuinely in life never get to experience this challenging situation again, right? Whether it's to do with your kids or wife, whatever it may be, this is the last time I may go through this. Let me just like, although it's hard, I'll just, you know, cherish it for what it is, take it from what it, what it is, and then it'll probably never happen again, right? So that's one, like one way to use the last time principle like psychologically on yourself. The other way is more like, wow, this is so horrible. I, I will never do this. Again. I'll never get myself in this situation again and make a plan how it won't happen again. I'll never make that mistake where like it ended up here. So this is the last time and that will help you sort of grind out whatever that situation is. And these are just basically just like little psychological hacks on yourself where it's like- I love psychological yeah, hacks. Yeah, because you're telling yourself this is the last time, whether it's like from the good perspective or like, oh, this is so bad, I'll make sure I've got a plan to never, this never happens again. Both, both of them work in the same way where it's like your brain is slightly eased by the point that last time. Bro, I think psychological hacks like 100% work on me. 100%. So many things, have, my life has changed in so many ways because I've just changed the way I think about it. Yeah, I, 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 I guess I kind of like, I, th I, I was doing it to myself before I knew what it was basically. I was like, I'll tell myself, I heard a good quote very early on which is like, you've got to be your own best friend, right? Your head, mm. the, the voice in your head, and I, I think we we discovered a few weeks back that you uh, not not everybody has that voice in their head, isn't it? Mm. Like that. But I've got a voice in my head. I think most people do. That's got to be like your best friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? It can't be against you. When that's things so are, true. yeah, when things are going bad, that's got to be like. It doesn't mean you should go to the extreme of like, oh, you're unaccountable for anything, and mm. you, you know, oh, you you can do no wrong, and your internal voice is constantly telling you you didn't do anything wrong. You got to hold yourself accountable. But after a certain point. You gotta stop beating yourself up at like a, like a bully would, and be more like a friend. Where it's like, no, no, it's all right, all right, that's done. Here's what we could do to fix it. Here's how we can make sure it never happens again. Here's what you did right. Here's what you did wrong. No, don't worry about it so much. Let's just try and move on from it. It's got to be like that. And I try. I've, I've alhamdulillah, I've tried to like do that to myself, and I think it helps in life, man. Just like being your own best friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good idea, bro. And uh, the last time principle, I heard that for the first time just now, but I think I'm, I already think I'm going to implement that. The first and last time. And this is the last time you're coming. <laughs> 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 um, bro, these things always work with me. Always. Yeah. You're talking to the right guy here. Yeah. Like, I, like I can't think of one now to my head, but bro, like psychological hacks. Yeah, there's so many. I, yeah. I hear about it, I'm just like, okay, yeah, I see, I see. I'll be down and out, bro. And like someone will just say like <laughs> yeah. a quote. I'm like, yeah. Think of your brain as an orange. <laughs> yeah, like I, I instantly oh. like change. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so yeah. weak to these things. So that's great. I'm actually going to use that. Yeah. Um, which I think ones that have um, benefited me mm. in real life uh, so far. Um, I don't know. I'm just easily convincible. I mean, uh, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier, man. Like a lot of 
the dunya is like how you respond to it, how you react to it. Mm. You, and you spoke about it last episode mm. as well. And you're in control of that. If you've got, yeah. if something happens to you, you know, is it a test? Is it a punishment? Well, look at how you responded to it. You know, that's what you were saying to me earlier. So that's, again, it's like, that is a psychological hack as well as like, you know, the more superior thing, it being the Islamically best thing to do to respond to that in a, to respond to any challenge that you face in a way that brings you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One that's helped me recently is not necessarily psychological hack, it's more of a system, a brain system, mm. which is the 80 20 rule. I told you about it. So there's yeah. many different 80 20 rules. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, is, people, yeah. yeah, if you just say 80 20 rules, yeah. it's like, well, which oh, one? Yeah. yeah. Like, the spend, there's like people, there's 80 20 rules of spending. There's 80, but this specific one is if you can get 80% of the uh, result with 20% of the effort, do it. As opposed to getting 100% of the result, but you're putting like 80% effort in. So you're like, because uh, most of the time that extra 20% effort like it's not going to be what separates you and it might be the thing that makes you you might end up quitting right Yeah. so a, a practical way I remember this I thought about this recently was the freshly grounded set so I was like oh, let's change the set because um, let's get chairs instead of table because the idea behind the table initially was that if we have like four or five people they can actually all fit on this table mm. we don't need four or five people anymore i can actually save so much space in this room by removing the table and then having the two chairs and then i thought to myself well so i was like sold on doing it and i was like using the 80 20 rule what's the end result i'm trying to get i'm trying to get a, a podcast out that's good quality and that looks good on camera and this looks good on camera good, yeah. so i'm gonna put in a lot of effort to somehow get rid of this table buy new chairs get fit, or the 20% is, or in this case, the 0% is just yeah. leaving everything as is, you get the exact same result. Yeah. So it's like, maybe the chairs might look slightly better, but not enough for the end result to change uh, so much. I'm still getting 80% of that end result at least yeah. of what I would have wanted with the chairs by just keeping the studio the same. So that's an example. That's a very good example. And I don't know, what, it's probably got some sort of name or principle to it, but that concept of figuring out where your energy should be spent. Exactly, the efficiency, I mean? energy, the efficiency yeah. of your energy. Yeah, EOE, so, efficiency of energy. There you go, yeah. you made up right there. <laughs> Twitter, EOE. Twitter, Twitter bro is like, yeah, yeah, starting yeah. Twitter right now. But Someone's making a thread about this right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Have not. you heard of the EOE um, strategy? Well, here, here's yeah. 17 tweets about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of like, you could have spent like three, four days, like, oh, I'll get rid of this, I'll go to Ikea, find a new chair, whatever. And I was gonna. And, and spend lots of money. And that would have like, in your own brain, it would have been nice. In my brain. In your brain. Maybe some of the um, audience would have noticed it. Oh, that's Maybe. nice. And, but, but even if they did, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's better. Nobody yeah. would have batted an idea. But yeah. if you did the same energy and money into um, TikTok content and ads, that could have made a huge impact on, yeah. on the podcast. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not always about, oh, I, I worked so hard on something. It didn't work. I, but did you work in the right way on that it's thing? You, you, like, how many people, there's so many people who are working so, so hard. And like not happening, and other people who seem to not do a lot of work at all, and things happen for them. Obviously, everything is from Allah, but you have to be smart about where you put that energy. So, do you know what I mean, you could put it into something that's just like a vanity thing, or like it just doesn't move the needle. Yeah. So yeah, moving the needle. Um, MTN, move the needle. To, yeah, move the needle yeah. thread coming. We need to have a list of. Uh, we need to make loads of acronym. Is it an acronym when you make? It is. Yeah. You no, know, is it? Yep. No, no. Yeah, it is. Isn't an acronym it is. when some like it's like you know um no that is an anagram anagram okay yes. yeah so this is an acronym yes. we need to make a list of acron fg acronyms fg that's an acronym for fresh grounded okay last thing we'll talk about because uh we wanted to make it a, a, a bit shorter of an episode because we we're get gonna get on a friday yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna go get hurt. that's the truth yeah. uh i thought we should have a segment every week on the podcast which is like islamic uh reminder of the week or islamic um so something islamic that's like benefited one of us in the week and we want to share it Fine. maybe like something light concept uh, so it doesn't have to be like you know I found this specific ruling on this right. matter because otherwise we're going to get into dangerous territory so we'll have to think of a name a funky name for the segment okay yeah so you have a think as a copywriter audience oh. have a think put them in your comments and maybe we can have a jingle for it but uh, obviously a halal jingle yeah. that has no music yes. but maybe it could just be me going Islamic reminder of the week <laughs> 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 so anyway this week's one is this first one right Fine. I was thinking about this concept I was thinking Back in the day, uh, there's studies that show something like back in the day, a person knew was a person's tight circle was like three people or whatever, and their extended circle was like 15 people or something like that. And then, like, uh, that's as, as much as it 
spanned out to. Now with the use of technology and stuff like that, um, and, and by the way, that was also, the study basically showed that that's optimum. It was like, what's the optimum amount of like people that you know that for you to like have the optimum lifestyle or whatever? And it was quite small compared to what we have now. You essentially know, uh, you probably could name me 500 people. When you when I say that, you're like, nah, there's no way. But actually, if you sat down, you had to name 500 people yeah. that, you've in, that you know, that are at least an acquaintance, you probably could. So, that's kind of irrelevant to what I'm about to mention, but I, it just, I just started thinking about that. Anyway, the Islamic reminder of the week is, there's probably people in your life that could do with a little boost of, oh yeah, Kaya loves me, mm. right? But you're busy, bro. You're here in another country, you're looking after your missus, your kids, your like business. You, you don't always, think, but, but there's some people in your life that at one point did something like great for you, you had a great relationship with them, or they're great acquaintance. If it gets if, if if it came to it and you saw them at an event or you, you flew into London, you would kind of make a bit of an effort. They're good people. Um, I'll give you an example, a real life example of people like um, for me, people like um, you could say. Uh, I'm trying to think of someone who like would be so uh, okay. The perfect example because I just met him, Shajil. So Shajil is a guy who he'd probably be annoyed for me mentioning his name, but uh, he along about a beautiful humble brother who always when it comes to freshly grounded events he takes care of the sound and main time we actually see each other is when there's a live event going on or there's some kind of event going on and he's amazing and he's always like such a like great part of the live events team but outside of that scenario we don't see each other that much he's busy he's very busy uh Allahumma barik, i'm busy and it's like we love each other so it's like brother i love you for the sake of Allah. like it's not there's there's that relationship doesn't necessarily exist where it's like you have to be like hey man just um uh, you, uh, uh, like you have to keep constant level of communication. It's like if there's a thing, if you need me, I'm here, and I say you might not have a free month, but if you if, if you need me, I'm here. If you need me, I'm here. However, for those people, how nice would it be every now and again to buy him a gift? Yeah, gifting, as we know from the hadith, increases love between people. Yeah, that's one thing. Ooh, the second thing, when you give for the sake of Allah, you're not going to lose it, achi. and to give it for the sake of Allah. Thirdly, keeping ties is very important. That's just three benefits. If me and you sat and uh, thought about it now, bro, we probably think of loads of benefits Islamically to gifting. But a uh, fourth one, this one I thought about recently, is that there could be a situation where someone has a bit of distaste for you in their heart and they don't, they don't realize it and you don't realize it. I'll give you an, a practical example. There's someone in the UK right now who... Um, who hates me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's someone in the UK right now, because I left the UK... Um, there's like one thing that I used to deal with in the UK, uh, very menial thing, bro. Right. Almost like receiving letters or something like that, right? Like that kind of level of, that I can't deal with they're not physically there anymore, right. that they have to deal with. It doesn't probably affect their life in any way, shape or form. But it is a thing where one day they might go, oh, like, this is a bit annoying. Mm. They might, they probably wouldn't because they're such an amazing person. But I don't want to take that for granted because they're kind of doing me a, a solid. So, Imagine if I just sent that person a gift, even if they had it in their heart, like, oh, I'm a bit annoyed with Faisal, that gets removed because we've got it from the hadith that gifting increases love for each other. So that's the Islamic mind of the week. How can we do it in a practical way? But we don't even have any excuse because we have Deliveroo, we've got Uber Eats, we've got Amazon Prime. Bro, all you've got to do, bro, and it's not about money, bro, the fact that yeah. you thought about someone is such a big thing, bro, you can t right now go on Deliveroo, send someone some dessert. If you have their address, they might be bother who you, one time you have to sort something out for him or you have to sort of contract out for him so you got his address. So then it's like, yo bro, dinner's on me tonight. Just wanted to, just haven't reached out in a while, just want to show love. Or Amazon Prime something to, the, or bro, even as simple as, if you don't have their address, go on um, Hostel or Starbucks' website, mm -hmm. buy a five pound, 10 pound gift voucher, yeah. send them the code by WhatsApp and be like, bro, coffee's on me today, just yeah. wanted to give you a little love. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, that person would be like, little five pound, bro, and the person would be like, that love, he solidifies it again. I feel like it's our responsibility Islamically to do that. So that's my, that's my monologue. Love it, love that, man. Um, and to follow that up, because you just, you just dropped this segment on me anyway. So okay, we got it, got it. What are you gifting me, <laughs> Kaya? <laughs> <laughs> um, even if you're in a position where you can't give something in a moment, right? To, to take to a loan and <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> no. check your tax bracket yeah? and figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might <laughs> you can actually work less. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you haven't got enough money. Work less. <laughs> your tax bracket will change. Yeah, and now you have more money. You have more money. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna say yeah. Um, you just you you, you 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 should just tell someone if you love them, you should that you love them. 
right? Yeah. Very under under sort of estimated. Um, also, also from the Sunnah. Exactly, it's from the Sunnah to do that. If you love somebody, you should tell them you love them. There's 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 a hadith about it. So if you're in a position where you can't give a gift or they, you know their physical location is not near, you can't give like that. Just message them. Look and say, look, I love you for the sake of Allah. You're you know? a kind word. Or a kind word. I was saying, yeah, but yeah, mm. either one of the two. Yeah. So just yeah. Um, I think that's it, man. I think that's a, I think like it's a good follow up to your, your advice. I haven't got anything prepared, so I think I'll give it that. Yeah, I, I didn't have it prepared really either. Oh, fair enough. That was just off the top of my <laughs> dome. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of F. G. Uh, Kaya and I are going to potentially meet another brother for some character tea, and uh, that's just the truth. The sweet truth. Yeah. Uh, take care, guys. See you inshallah next week. Sorry, this episode's been out got out a tiny bit late, but uh, we have filmed it late on Friday and we're releasing it late on Friday. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.